All right, with this lesson, we're going to talk about the graphs of a function and its derivative. Uh, so far, everything we've done with derivatives involved equations where we would use limits to find either the slope at a point or to find the derivative. Well, now we're going to look at the graph of a function and find out what that means with the derivative. Uh, so, a few things we need to go over first. Um, if I ever say like f prime of a, f prime of 2, f prime of some number, that just means the slope of the function or um, function, you could say the slope of the tangent at x equals a. So if I had some equation, I'll just make up a quick graph real quick. Uh, let's say my function looks like this. And let's say this is x equals 4. And I found the tangent at 4. If I wanted to know what f prime of 4 is, that means about what is the slope at 4. So I would sketch the tangent, or draw the tangent through 4, and try to guess what that slope is. And that looks about to be a slope of 1. So you could say f prime of 4 is 1, because that's about what the slope of the tangent is. Uh, there are also differentiable points and non-differentiable points. Um, differentiable just means you can take the derivative. The places where you can take the derivative are where you have a nice, smooth, cute function. It's just nice, and it goes on. And look how nice and smooth that is. No points or corners or jumps or anything funky. It doesn't matter what point I pick on that function, if I pick this point, I could very easily draw a tangent. If I pick a point over here, I could draw the tangent. If I pick a point right here, I can draw a tangent. Now this tangent is kind of weird because it's actually going to go through, well, it's going to go through the graph. But all, all those points are nice and smooth. Those are differentiable. That means you can find the tangent or you can find the slope. Places that are not differentiable, meaning you can't take the derivative, those are going to be places where you have a discontinuity. So let's say you have a function um, with a jump. So your function does this thing. It goes up here. Or maybe even if it's just a hole. Even if all you have is a hole. Technically, I cannot draw a derivative or a tangent there because there's no point for the tangent to touch. So that's not differentiable. So I would say at that point, um, for that function, f prime of 2 does not exist. You cannot take the derivative there. And that's true for any discontinuity, whether it's a jump, a hole, an asymptote, you cannot take derivatives there. The other group is corners or cusps, and those are kind of the same thing. I put them both in there, but what a corner or cusp is, is just when your graph comes to a point. So that would look something like this, where you have a very sharp point in the graph. And the reason you can't take the derivative at that point is because even though I could draw a line that touches my graph there, it's not a distinct line. I could draw a whole bunch of tangents that touch at that point. There's not one distinct slope through that point. And since there's a whole bunch of possible tangents, then we just say we can't draw one. So f prime of 1 in this case does not exist again because that's a corner or a cusp. So let me get those. Ah, geez, what I just do? See, I just want to move these out of the way. There we are. Um, so any point or corner, you cannot take the derivative. And the last one, this one's a little bit harder to visualize, but any time your function has a vertical tangent, which means your graph, and this happens on occasion, it's not very common, but that means your graph, it comes and maybe it gets vertical for just a second before taking back off. Um, and those points, like right here, where if I were to try to draw the tangent, my tangent would be vertical. So I can draw one distinct tangent, but the problem is the slope of a vertical line is undefined. And that's what derivatives tell you is slope. So if the slope is undefined, that means, therefore, f prime is undefined at that point. Uh, so non-differentiable points, whole or discontinuities, corners, cusps, or vertical asymptotes, or vertical uh, tangents, sorry. So let's put all this together, and there's a blank page. Let's draw a triangle man. All right. Hey, all right. Okay. So moving on to the next page, and ah, another blank page. Don't know what that means. Here we go. Finally, some problems. So here's the function, and what I'm wanting you to do is find f prime of all of these values. Um, so it says, uh, find f prime. 
Um, and remember that f prime of any number represents the slope at that point. So f prime of negative 3, I would go to negative 3. Here's where the function is. And I would think about the tangent. So my tangent comes down about like that. And you have to find the slope of that tangent. And it's going to be estimating. I'm guessing that tangent has a slope of about 2. So I would say f prime of negative 3 is about 2. And then f prime of negative 2, I just go to my graph at negative 2. And again, I visualize the slope. And that slope uh, is not quite as steep as this one. I'm going to say that slope is about 1. And I'm just going to keep marching along. Hey, the bell's ringing. How exciting is that? Um, so f prime of negative 1, here I am. Now, this one's a nice one. I really like this one because it's at a max, a local max. And that means the slope is 0. So that one I'm not going to say is approximately. I think that one is equal to 0. Uh, at 0, now this is a really steep negative slope. And that's real steep. I think that's probably about as steep as any slope on the curve. Oh, good announcements, too. This is wonderful. Jeez. All right. Y'all get that message? All right, so let's see. So the slope, I'm guessing at 0 is about negative 3. That's just a guess. If you want to say negative 4, something around there, that's good. At 1, ooh, another uh, horizontal tangent, so that slope is 0. At 2, um, I'm guessing about 1. And at 3, I'm guessing that's a little bit steeper. I'm guessing that's about 2. So I've gone through and I've found the values of my derivative at all of those places. And now that I've done that, what I can actually do is sketch my derivative. At negative 3, I said f prime is about 2. So I'll go negative 3, and I'll just plot a point at 2, because that's what I think f prime of 3 is. f prime of negative 2, we said, was about 1. So I'll plot a point at negative 2, 1. Negative 1, the slope is 0. Ne uh, at 0, we're all the way down at negative 3. At 1, we said the slope was 0. At 2, we said the slope was 1. And when x was 3, the slope was 2. So I'll plot those. And then if I wanted to actually sketch the derivative, so I'm going to sketch f prime. I'm using the slopes of my function, and I think it's going to be something like this. It's going to come down, hit that point, come up, and hit those others. And I kind of missed right there, but... That's about what the derivative is going to look like. So you're basically just graphing the slopes of the original function. How are we doing on time? Not too bad. Um, so here we go. Find the slopes at the points and then plot the points and sketch it. Here's another one. Um, f prime of 0. So I'm looking at 0. Here's where my function's at 0. And I have a real steep negative slope. Um, I don't know how steep that is. What do y'all say that slope is? Maybe negative 3, I guess? I don't know. It's just guessing. If you want to say negative 4, that's fine. Um, it's all estimating. At 1, ooh, that's a minimum. The slope there is definitely 0, so I'm going to say that one equals 0. At 2, so here I'm at x equals 2. My slope is about, um, I'm going to say 1. That's just a guess. At 3, my slope is maybe 2. I'm not sure. What do you all think? 1, 1 1.5, 2, I'll go 1.5. It's just a guess. At 4, that looks like a max, so my slope is 0. And at 5, my slope appears to be about negative 1. And then once you get all those slopes, then we could plot them. f of 0, we said was negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. f of 1 was 0. f prime, I mean, f prime of 2 is 1. F prime of 3 is 1.5. That was our guess. F prime of 4 is back to 0. F prime of 5 was negative 1. And then that's going to represent my derivative. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Now let's see what's next. I'm going to come back and look at this one in just a second. Yeah. Um, now if you look at this, uh, when you're sketching the derivative, one thing you'll notice, uh, hopefully, is first, wherever you have a max or a min, that's when the derivative hits the x-axis, because those are zero slopes. Those are the zeros or the roots of the derivative. And then, if you look at this whole piece of the graph right there, I'm highlighting that, that piece, and this piece, what do you notice about those two pieces I just highlighted? Anybody? 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 
That's right, they're decreasing. My function is going down. And any time my function is going down, f of x is going down. Why did I write that? I don't know. f of x is going down. And if a function is going down, that means that slopes have to be negative. If a function is going down that general direction, slopes are negative. And if you look at the derivative on that interval, my derivative, it also was negative because my functions are going down. Um, same thing over here. My function is going down, so to the left of 1, my derivative was negative. Now, if you look at this piece right here, where my function is increasing, if f is increasing, well, that means slopes are positive. So f is increasing, slopes are positive. That means my derivative is positive over that interval because my function is increasing. So if your function is increasing, your derivative is positive. It has to be above the x-axis. If your function is decreasing, your derivative is negative. It has to be below the x-axis. Um, I'll just leave all that there. Uh, so, all right, let's use that thinking that we were just using right here, generating these graphs and those points, to go from a graph and see if we can pair these blue graphs with their derivatives over here. And let's look at number A right here. Um, looking at A, the first thing I notice, if this is my function and I want to match it to its derivative, the first thing I'm going to look for is places where the slope of my function is 0. And that happens right there at this x-coordinate. So that means my derivative is going to be on the x-axis right there. I have a slope of 0. So that's going to be a 0 or a root for my derivative. Same thing right here. I have another slope of 0. So my derivative is going to have a slope of 0 there. Um, and actually, that's going to be enough to, get my, to match it up because there's only one option of these four where I have roots at these places, and that's going to be option 2. So I know 2 is going to match up with graph A. Uh, but let's look at the rest of this and figure out why it appears to be an upside-down parabola. Let's see if we can figure that part out. Um, I'm going to look at, first, places where my function is decreasing. And I'm looking right here. My function is going down. Right here, my function is going down. And any place your function is decreasing, that means my derivative should be negative. So my derivative is going to be negative for, to the left of that root. To the right of that root, my derivative is going to be negative also. And then if you look between those two roots, if we look at this piece, you'll see that my function is increasing. And if my function is increasing, that means slopes are positive. That means my derivative is positive. It's above the x-axis. So you can see now, hopefully, why graph A, its derivative is option 2 over here. Um, I'm going to skip around and jump down to D, because I think D is a little bit quicker. So we're going to do D. Duty. <laughs> Duty. <laughs> Poo-poo. OK. Um, so we're going to do D here. I can't say that without laughing. Anyway, uh, looking at for zero slopes, I see actually three zero slopes. I see a slope of 0 right here. I see a slope of 0 right there. And I see a slope of 0 at that x coordinate. And then I'm going to start looking for places where my slope is negative. I'm going to find my negative parts. So here my function is decreasing. Here my function is decreasing. That means for those x-coordinates between these two roots, my derivative needs to be negative. So I'm going to have to come down and be negative between those two. And to the right of this point, my slopes are always negative, so my derivative will always be negative. And then if I look at the rest of my graph, if I look at the rest of the graph, right here, my function is going up. And if my function is going up, if my function is increasing, my derivative has to be positive. So my function is increasing. My derivative is going to be positive to the left of that x-intercept. Between these two right here, my function is increasing, so my derivative will be positive. And that looks like option 3. So option 3 right here is the derivative of graph D. Um, let's see, which one should I do next? Let's go to B. B is an interesting one. So remember I told you that if you have a corner or a cusp, your derivative does not exist at those points. So there's going to be something funky going on at this x-coordinate and at this x-coordinate, which means this one's going to be option 4 because we have some goofy stuff going on. But let's look at the rest of this graph and see what's happening. If you pick any point, say this section right here where my function is going up, 
my slopes are the exact same throughout. Doesn't matter what point I pick, the slope remains the same. Well, that means my derivative is going to remain the same. It's going to be constant. That's a positive slope, so I'm going to have a positive constant for my derivative. And I just picked some place. I, didn't, I don't care how high or how low you put it for now. Um, and so I'm positive there. And it looks like I have the exact same positive slope right here. So I have a positive slope, then a negative slope, but then the same positive slope right there. So I will draw a, another constant segment for my derivative. And I put it at the same height because these appear to have the same slope. So I want them to be the same. If you put the second piece down here, then what you're saying is this slope is a lot lower or a lot less steep than this slope, which it's not. They appear to be the same. So I'm going to put those two constants at the same height. And then my negative slope, it appears to be the same slope but negative. So however high I was, I'm going to be that same distance low down here, and it's going to be constant. And then since I'm not differentiable, the derivative does not exist at those corners, we're going to put open circles to show that we're not including those points. And that's going to be option four. And then the final one, before I quit the recording, is going to be option C, or number C here. And there is one place with a zero slope, so I'm going to put a zero right there, because I have a zero slope. And then if you look at the rest of it, this one is going to be a little bit interesting. Um, it starts just barely negative. So this whole section right here, that whole section, my function, is going down. And if my function is decreasing, Therefore, my derivative must be negative. So I know my derivative is going to be below the x-axis, but I'm going to be a little bit more picky about the shape of the derivative. If you notice, the slope at the very beginning, this very beginning slope, that's almost a zero slope. It's just barely negative. But then as I move to the right, my slopes get more negative before they get to a slope of zero. So I go barely negative to more negative to zero. So when I'm sketching the derivative for this one, I'm going to start barely negative, I'm going to get to more negative, but then I've got to get to a slope of zero. Same thing on the right side, it starts at zero, then it gets kind of a steep positive, and then it gets less positive. As I get towards the end, <clears throat> my slope is less positive, getting that close to a slope of zero. So I'm going to start by going more positive, but then as I move to the right, my slopes, my derivative has, should get closer to zero. So it's going to come back down, and that's why option one is the shape that it is. So there we go. That's going from the graph of a function to the graph of the derivative, and that's what we're going to work on in class today. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to stop, and I will see you in class.